What's up, y'all? I'm Emil Ennis Jr., back here with Clever Music, and Lady Gaga recently talked about the downfalls of her success, and she opened up about the one thing that she believed was the ultimate source of her unhappiness. Before we get into the story, I'd like to offer a trigger warning as some of the topics discussed may be triggering, and we've linked some resources down below in the description box. So Lady Gaga appeared on CBS's Sunday Morning to discuss her journey and the hardships that come along with fame. She admitted that her latest album, Chromatica, is a very personal one, saying, quote, there's not one song on that record that's not true, not one. When asked what was so dark about that particular time in her life, Gaga had this to say. I, I totally gave up on myself. I hated being famous. I hated being a star. I felt exhausted and used up. And she also opened up about one special piano, which has stayed with her throughout her many years of entertaining. This is the piano I've had for so many years. I've written so many songs on this piano. That pretty one? Yes, and I think, oh my gosh, what's so special, this piano, I love this piano. And although that piano holds such a special place in her heart, Lady Gaga also admitted to having negative thoughts towards the instrument as well. I don't know how to explain it, but I, I went from looking at this piano and thinking, you ruined my life. That's how you thought originally? No, I, for during this time, I was like, you made me Lady Gaga. My biggest enemy is Lady Gaga. That's what I was thinking. My biggest enemy is her. She went on to further explain some of the reasons she had grown to despise the persona that catapulted her into stardom. What did you do? You can't go to the grocery store now. If you go to dinner with your family, somebody comes to the table, you can't have a dinner with your family without it being about you. It's always about you. All the time it's about you and your outfits, look at your outfits. Why you gotta be like that? And she also reflected on her previous album, Joanne, which was named after her late aunt on her father's side. Lady Gaga talked about the experience of writing the album saying, quote, I was writing about the trauma from my father's life that became my trauma in a lot of ways. And I thought I could fix my dad. But then she admits that she knows she could never actually fix him. And while the album made it to number one, Lady Gaga was struggling behind the scenes. It's not always easy if you have mental issues to let other people see. I used to show, I used to self-harm. I used to say, look, I cut myself. See, I'm hurting. Because I didn't think anyone could see, because mental health is in, it's invisible. She also reflects upon thinking she was, quote, over, and continued on to say, quote, I didn't really understand why I should live other than to be there for my family. That was an actual real thought and feeling. Why should I stick around? The interviewer asked Lady Gaga if she had thought about suicide, to which she replied by saying, quote, oh yeah, every day. Gaga also shared that she had people watching her in her home for years in order to make sure she wasn't harming herself. Yeah. I lived in this house while people watched me for a couple of years to make sure that I was safe. She also explained the trauma her mind and body experience when she's in public and a random person pulls out a cell phone and begins to snap pictures of her. Lady Gaga says she experiences, quote, total panic, full body pain. And she continues to say, I'm braced because I'm so afraid. It's like I'm an object, I'm not a person. She also talked about how she poured her trauma into Chromatica, explaining how songs like 911, 1000 Doves, and Rain On Me are metaphors for her actual life. Papa 911, that's a reference to the medication that I have to take when I used to panic because I'm Lady Gaga. And although her success and fame come with so much baggage, Lady Gaga explains that she simply cannot stop making music. She said, quote, I swear on my future unborn children, I don't know why, but I have to. This, I have to do it. Singing, I have to. Turns out, even if I don't want to be alive, I still know how to write a song. And she also talked about how she considers collaborators like Ariana Grande and Elton John to be good friends of hers and that they've been there for her. Gaga went on to reveal that she's come to terms with the fact that she can't change the past. Is that cheesy thing that you say like, oh, I'm glad I went through it because it made me stronger? Okay. I, I could have done without the last two and a half years of my life. I could have done without that. But you know what? It happened. She is also releasing a book next week called Channel Kindness, which is a collection of stories that have been sent to her by people who have experienced, quote, the power of kindness in the midst of adversity. And the interviewer ended on a positive note as Lady Gaga admitted that she's in a much better place mentally and physically. I don't hate Lady Gaga anymore. I found a way to love myself again, even when I thought that was never gonna happen. Now I look at this piano and I go, oh my God, my piano. My piano that I love so much, my piano that lets me speak, my piano that lets me make poetry. 
my piano that's mine and we are so happy that lady gaga is learning to love herself again and helping others to do so in the process but for more music news click right over here for another clever video and then let me know your thoughts on lady gaga's interview down in the comment section below i'm your host amil ennis jr you can find me on instagram at amil ennis jr and i'll see you soon right back here on clever music bye guys